great, isn't it? Do you know what? In over a hundred years, the bicycle saddle has evolved from ones such as the fully sprung leather saddles of Arthur Garford in the 1800s to ones such as this, a full carbon composite mix, titanium rails and a seat which is said to allow for complete freedom of movement over the bike. In other words, a seat that you don't really sit on that much. Unlike e-mountain bikes, on the other hand, which in a short space of 10 years have totally transformed how we ride mountain bikes. For those of us who have gone electric, many of us are now finding that we're riding more frequently for longer periods and often on more technical terrain, which is why some brands are actually tuned into e-bike specifics. For example, how does the seat sit, so to speak? So where then do seats belong in the evolutionary system? Do you actually need a good seat? Is there any seat out there that you can sit on for longer than six hours without getting a sore ass? Will an e-bike specific saddle give you increased performance? Now, I think you genuinely will. I think it's more here than just marketing. But first of all, we need to look at why and also a little bit of history. Now, the history part is actually pretty straightforward. The bicycle, 19th century, the mountain bike, 1980s. Now, the first mountain bike saddles were actually pretty straightforward. But from those early days, the sport developed or diversified into different disciplines such as downhill, cross country and enduro. And each of those sports then developed specific parts for that discipline, such as wheels, tires, brakes, and of course, seats. Now, can anybody remember the first uh, Tioga Banana downhill seats from the early 2000s? Still available in Manila, Manila today. And of course, the big laid back seats on some of those prototype GT and specialized bikes of the same era. Now, today's uh, downhill saddle are actually a little bit more minimalist. Now, e-mountain biking, on the other hand, is very different. I mean, let's face it, it's a sport which has only really been around for, what, five or six years. And its needs are actually quite detailed, especially when it comes to such things as saddles. So let's look at maybe four things you might be looking for in an e-bike saddle. The first thing I would suggest is that a rigid seat will lead to a lot of bouncing up and down, which is gonna mean you're gonna be losing traction on the rear tire. Uh, secondly, you might well be uh, riding steeper hills and, uh, and therefore if you've got a flat saddle then it's possible that your bum will be slipping off the rear of the, of the, of the saddle so you need a little bit of support in that area. Uh, number three is it's quite likely that you might well be riding for longer periods and more frequently on your e-mountain bike. So this area, the side to side area is really quite key. You need a bit of flexibility there for those, for those longer rides. And finally is, uh, is the fact that you might well be climbing super steep hills on your e-bike. So this nose area of the saddle is certainly an area which needs a look at in detail uh, in terms of the shape and profile uh, of the seat. There are three other big topics to discuss uh, which apply to, uh, to saddles in general, not just e-bike saddles. And those three are numbness in the soft tissue area, uh, sit bone pressure and lower back support. Now check out this diagram from Ergon which shows the perineal area because remember there's also male and female specific uh, saddles to tackle as well. Now, not only is there the male and female specific saddles to take into account, there's the different sizes as well. Because ultimately, it is a game of trial and error to get the perfect saddle for you. You might want to get yourself along to a shop or a trade event or an event of some kind or other to get fitted uh, for your saddle because there's so many out there on the market, so many brands, so many shapes. And another thing to take into account is actually the type of riding you do. For example, if you ride on maybe smooth fire roads, then you might get away with maybe a kind of gel type saddle. Whereas if you are gonna be using your e-mountain bike in technical situations, you really need to tune into the performance detail of an e-bike specific saddle. Now we're really not long into the evolution of the EE mountain bike and already we're seeing many brands come up with uh, their ideas on the detail of e-bike specific saddles. So let's have a look at a few of them. 
Some examples then of e-bike seats and the details. We're gonna start off with the Proxim from Italian brand Pro Logo. Now we've ridden this seat on numerous occasions, including the Merida E160, which we tried out last year. Uh, now it's got some key detail. It's got different areas mapped out on the saddle to reduce numbness. The tip is also concord shape, which means it's really good for tackling those super uh, steep climbs where you get onto the front of the bike. Really like that idea. Uh, there's a central channel there to eliminate numbness and the shape is semi-round so you can get more freedom of movement and more flexible too to get really involved in the pedal strokes of your bike which you're gonna be, if you're going to be sat down on the saddle for long periods. And of course there's different sizes too. Now moving on to Canyon. Now Canyon actually have an e-bike specific seat uh, as part of the original package on their Canyon Spectralons and Canyon Neuronons. Uh, the detail on this is a angled rear, which means you don't slip off the back of the bike if you're tackling technical climbs. SQ Labs has got also a lower no lowered nose design and mapping for stress relief and of course a range of sizes. Now Ergon have spent a ton of time researching e-bike like saddles and now I've got two versions of it. Uh, they've also got male and female and two sizes as well. Now I recently spoke with Alex Branch uh, over at the R&D department uh, of Ergon to talk us through the latest version. So my first question is, um, I, I, can ride, I can ride an e-bike for short periods, but is there any way to design a seat that is comfortable for six, eight, 10, 12 hours, or is it simply that I need to get used to endurance? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, yeah, a lot of people ask that. Personally, I mean, I work for Urban about two years now, so I've been, you know, thinking a lot about saddles way more than I did before. And uh, I think at a certain stage of time in your saddle, your butt will hurt. You know, it's physics, it's just, you know, you're rubbing, you're moving, you have your weight and everything. Uh, so that is kind of the first factor, which everyone has and you can't really change. But then there's all the other factors that you can, uh, that people have that are very individual, but we as a brand can, you know, work with them and try to match them. So for example, you have all these different sit down width. So we will, you know, try to have um, two sizes that these sizes fit most of these uh, sit bone width. And then for sure, every person is different. So you need to find kind of the middle of everything. And also we have the men and women. That's what all you can do, you know. We, we do the two shell core system, uh, which we're going to talk about later. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're always trying to, uh, you know, get better, better, find more ways to make it more, um, uh, more comfortable. But I think there's a certain uh, degree where it's almost impossible. Because everyone's <laughs> different. So you've got the um, uh, the core prime and the uh, it's the mountain sport, right? Yeah. This is the new saddle. This is the old saddle. So, I mean, this has got the, the new saddle has got some amazing features. Obviously it's six, six layer compared to two layer of the, of this one, I think, is it? So what, obviously it's quite different to price. This is 150 euros. This is 80 euros. What, why would you choose one over the other? They're both e-bike saddles. Yeah. First of all, you know, there's always two kind of people. Uh, there's the guy who wants to spend 80 bucks. And maybe even says, oh, well, 80 bucks, you know? And then there's the person who says, oh, you know, I want maximum performance. I want the most modern thing. And uh, with the core saddle, we've actually been trying around in different disciplines uh, with the core system. So I've been building prototypes and we've just been trying and seeing where it really, you know, benefits a lot. And um, so I, I don't have the e mountain bike uh, core saddle on me here because I, I wasn't you know i wasn't in the office for quite a while um but i do have the st core it's it's a different version but it's still the same uh two shell system so just talking about that system uh, and what it does on the e-bike is you know um it's two shells so you have a floating effect this is just perfect for seating and that is a little bit softer. 
So when you sit on the bike and you pedal, you have a natural hip movement, right? So you always move a little from right to the left. And in between these two shells, all this movement will, you know, naturally be damp dampened. First of all, that to take out this movement, it's really good for your lower back because the, um, the muscle goes all the way to your lower back. And moving your hip a little bit more really, you know, prevents uh, pain. Um, and on the e-bike, we found out that it actually, when you sit on the nose, or even on regular steeper climbs, and you have the pressure on the saddle, and you get all these little small bumps that are like bounce you off the saddle, it really helps you gain traction because that softer material takes off the vibration. And uh, it's actually a really good benefit for e-biking if you like to do, you know, techie steep stuff. And uh, at the same time, it really gives you more comfort. So it's a really good all-around saddle. Well, it's incredible how detailed that Ergon saddle is. There's six different layers, loads and loads of detail in there. And you know what? I'm wondering whether mountain biking and road biking might actually learn something from the development, the R&D process, which is currently going on with e-mountain bikes. The bicycle then has always been a pain when it comes to sitting down, but e-bikes might actually be adding to the development process of the saddle. And remember, the saddle has been around a long time. It's 1888 since Brooks set up shop in England making their first bicycle seats, the B-17 and the Concorde, which were quite heavy. And remember, their seat from only 100 years ago weighed in at 700 grams. So 100 years then to, to take out half a kilo to the modern day e-mountain bike seats. But as I mentioned earlier, it is a game of trial and error when it comes to the seat of your choice. So get out there, get involved, try out the seats and find out what works for you.